Hello friends, today we're doing something a little different. I'm gonna show you some tricks in Metroid Dread, specifically how to sequence break a particular part of the game in order to kill the boss Kraid in a very unique way. Now, many of you may already know that this sequence break exists because you've seen on Twitter or on various YouTube accounts different videos showing this Kraid boss fight beat in this alternative way. But maybe you don't know actually how to do it yourself, so that's what we're going to be looking at today. This sequence break involves getting the Morph Ball bombs early, but in order to pull that off, you need to do another sequence break first to get the Grapple Beam early as well. So, how does this work? you'll want to begin just by playing through the game normally up until the point where you get the Varya suit, which you'll get after this brief little chase scene where this room is overheating. After which, the game will quite literally drop you back to Teleport Station Red, which would teleport you back from Upper Artaria down into Lower Cataris. From here, the game's implied order would take you through this conveniently placed door into this hot room where we would go and fight Kraid. However, to do this sequence break, we need to ignore that implied order, and instead of going through the door into the hot room, we'll jump back out of this area and make our way up to the transportation at the top of Cataris, which will take us back to Dayron. So you'll want to track through the Emmy zone, but the Emmy should be defeated by this point, up to the top of Cataris and take the transport back to Dayron. From here, make your way through Dayron, past this save room, and you'll want to make your way to this section of the map over to the room with teleport station purple. You can't actually reach the teleport station itself just yet, but you'll be able to see it on the map here. You'll want to make your way into this hidden section of breakable floor, which you'll actually be able to see the tiles that are breakable are sort of separated and lined here on the floor. Break through there and use the morph ball to go through this tunnel and into this superheated room, which since we already have the Varia suit, we can endure. You can grab this energy part if you want here by hopping up in morph ball mode. And from here is the area where we'll do the first sequence break. The way to go is right, but I actually recommend going left first. And the reason for that is that there's a network station to the left here, which will act as a save room. Now you're gonna wanna save here because the next part of this sequence break can be pretty tricky to pull off, and if it's your first time doing it, you will almost certainly die trying to pull it off, as I have certainly many times. So it's good to use this save point to avoid having to backtrack through here if you do die trying to pull off this next part. So if we head through the right to the right section, there's a breakable floor which reveals a breakable wall and a hidden door. So blast that apart, and <laughs> here's where the fun begins. What you'll need to do is slide through this gap, and as you're sliding, hit the jump button to jump into the air, and immediately double back and wall jump off the wall here to make it up to this ledge. This is very difficult to pull off. I consider myself to be pretty good at this game, but even I die continuously trying to pull off this little maneuver here. So be persistent, don't give up. It can be a little frustrating dying over and over, but thankfully if you use that save room, then you shouldn't have too much backtracking. Once you've reached the ledge, roll across here, but don't roll out of this area in Morph Ball because you'll just drop straight into the lava thanks to this little ramp here. Instead, what you wanna do is stand up here and use a dash jump. So dash through the gap there and immediately jump and you should be able to grab this ledge and roll on through. This is the hardest part of the sequence break. It should be pretty much smooth sailing from here. So head through the charge beam door here, break this wall and head down this elevator, which takes us back into Artaria. Now in Artaria, head through the door and down this shaft and you'll find this room with a missile door. Open that up and head into the next room and congratulations, you've gotten yourself the grapple beam earlier than the game intended. Now, I kind of love this because the game really does reward you for this by opening up a lot of shortcuts to us later on, thanks to having this grapple beam early, but let's move on. There's a save room up here as well in Artaria that you might want to use just in case. But once you've done that, you can head back up the shaft where we came by using the grapple beam on these magnetic walls and take the same elevator we were just in back to Dayron. By the way, while we're here, there is a power bomb expansion you can grab though you probably don't have power bombs just yet, but it's worth grabbing while you're here. Now what we're going to want to do is backtrack through those hot rooms, though there is a shortcut at the top of the room you can take, so you don't have to do any tricky maneuvering on the way back here. And let's head back to that network station that we used as a save point earlier. Again, you may want to save here just to be safe. 
All right, now you can head through the left door and into the Emmy zone here. And what you're going to want to do is make your way upwards and to the left. There's a few Emmy zone exits in this sector, but the most upper left one is the one we want here. And you'll know you've gone to the right place, which has this grapple block in the way. But because we got the grapple beam early, we can break that and move on. This area is one of those spots where the power is out. So just like you would normally do when you come here, you're going to want to make your way through this area to the top left door where there's a map room that's inactive and head down through this room and turn on the power. Once the power is activated here, we can head back into this room up to near where the map room was and head into this missile door at the top right of the room to get yourselves the bombs early. Awesome. So now we've done a bit of sneaky sequence breaking to get both the grapple beam and the bombs nice and early. Next is a matter of heading back to Kraid. So to do that, the easiest way is to just backtrack the way we came. So you'll just want to head back to the gondola transport that we were in before and back to Cataris. And it looks like a big deal on the map, but it should actually be a short trip back to this room with this huge monster statue and rolling on through. We'll be back where we started at this door leading into this hot area. Now we can head on through battling these sort of rock guys as we go and these rooms will sort of loop back on themselves and we'll drop into the Kraid boss fight. The first half of the boss fight will go as normal so you'll still have to go through this first phase as you normally would by shooting him in the mouth with either missiles or the charge beam but once you get through that part of the battle he'll break the floor and then this is where the fun begins. Now normally you'd have to sort of shoot at his weak spot here and avoid his attacks until we can grab onto the magnetic wall but in this case what we'll want to do is go to the corner here and use a bomb to break this block and there's a morph ball launcher that will launch you right into one of these weird hole things that is on Kraid's belly. You'll take damage while you're inside Kraid so you'll want to do this quickly but basically just mash the Y button to deploy as many bombs as possible as quickly as you can and Kraid will go down really quickly. Now, if you're trying to speedrun the game and cut down on some playtime, this is a great way to reduce time spent on this boss battle, especially because that second phase can take a pretty long time. Now that that's done, you should be able to head into the next room and collect the diffusion beam as you normally would. And from here, there's a few shortcuts that are open to us now that we already have grapple beam and bombs. For example, next, the game would take you through teleport station purple here and back into Dayron, where we would use the diffusion beam to break this block and actually go to try and collect the grapple beam. But since we we already have it, we don't have to do that, we can actually just head through this grapple beam door and move on. So even though we had to go out of our way earlier, that time spent is made up for right away by not having to backtrack here. So there you have it guys, I hope this was a helpful little guide, and though that might be tricky, it's really fun to do these kind of sequence breaks, and it's really refreshing to see a game not only allow you to sequence break like this, but actually reward you for it by opening up shortcuts, even giving alternate cutscenes and ways to defeat bosses. It's one of the ways that Metro Dread really excels in its level design. So let me know what you guys think, or if you've tried this successfully, or not successfully, whatever it may be. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and make sure to drop me a comment down below. I promise you I will read all the comments, so let me know what you guys think of Metroid Dread and this particular sequence break. Alright guys, that's all for me for now. I'll have more guides coming up soon, particularly on some of the trickier speed booster and shine spark puzzles in this game, if you guys are interested in that. Anyways guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you all very soon. Bye bye! Thank you so much for watching this video, I just wanted to take a quick second to say thank you to the lovely people who supported me on Patreon as well as my channel members, particularly those who supported at the cheese level or higher, which includes Tetra, Brenda, Justin, Callie, Finley, Grey Mage, Hylian Historian, Gale, and Ethan3G. Thank you so much for the support you guys, and I will catch you all next time. Bye bye